Hello everybody, I am Will, or Hexparrot, creator of MineOS. Today's video is about my latest edition, MineOS Turnkey, which is designed to be the most simple installation yet, with the fewest amount of required prompts and the least amount of time to get from zero to a fully working and configured Minecraft server. Let's get started. Today I'm going to install this on Oracle VirtualBox. Of course, you do not need to install it on VirtualBox, it installs just as well to bare metal, other virtual machines such as VMware, Zen, or even KVM. This is because MineOS Turnkey operates off of the solid Debian foundation, which has great kernel support and even better package management through the apt get utility. Okay, I have created an instance of 64-bit VirtualBox. I'm going to start, and I have mounted the 64-bit ISO. There's also a 32-bit ISO available. When it loads, it brings me to the splash screen. I'll install the hard disk. This video is assuming that you're installing to a hard drive that has no other operating systems or other partitions that need to be saved. Otherwise, you'll need to take that into account during the partitioning and do a manual partition. For the purposes of this video and for most recommendation, I'm going to recommend the guided use entire disk option. Now, it's recommending an ext4 and a swap drive. I'll go ahead and click yes. With MineOS Turnkey, it'll take approximately 800 megabytes of hard disk space, so make sure you take that into account for whatever hard drive space or partition sizes you've used um, in the virtual machine to make sure you have enough space for this, as well as all of your Minecraft world data. And it's going to install the Grub bootloader, which I also recommend for ease. And then it's going to ask you to restart. Once it restarts, you'll also want to unmount your ISO or take it out of your DVD drive and when it restarts it's going to go through the first time configuration setups which is choosing all the passwords for the usernames that we're going to use to log in. So here's a grub. It will automatically go through that and then it's going to ask us to set the root username password. Here we go root username password or other, and then the MC user password. And then this is a completely different username used only for connecting to the web user interface for Minecraft. So I can choose anything I want. I'll choose my name. Now the hub services is a value added service offered by MineOS, or sorry, by turnkey developers not related to MineOS. Uh, since that does come with a cost, you probably aren't going to end up being using it. So I'm going to skip it. And then security updates will automatically install security updates to your server, which you may consider doing. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to skip it. And then all the services are going to start up, and we are left at the configuration console. At this point, MineOS Turnkey is completely done and installed, but this page here will give you access to a little bit more information that you might use to connect to your server. As we can see, it gives you the IP address and the username for connecting to SSH, SFTP. It has the Hiawatha, the Hiawatha path, the Minecraft, Minecraft ports, and then the web shell is shell in a box, which is allowing you to use a browser to open up an SSH client to connect to your computer. And then finally, you have Webmin, which is a specialized uh, control panel to help manage your entire server. If you click Advanced Menu, you'll see it's a very easy toggle between DHCP and Static IP. That way you can have more consistent behavior from your, your IP address, at least on your local network. And if you hit Quit, you'll see it brings you right back to a very familiar console, which you can log into as root, for example. So you can see the IP address is actually listed right here, or you can see it through ifconfig. 192.168.111 is the IP address. So let's go ahead and type that in. Um, 192.168.111 is to get to this page, slash admin will get you to the MineOS admin panel. From here, everything's already taken care of. You can simply download a profile, set up a new server, and then you're good to go. Let's do that right now. Um, let's first check for new versions to see if there's anything else. Looks like there's 0.5.4i, so let's update and use that stable. And then refresh. Okay, and now let's download the vanilla Minecraft jar. 
Once it's completed, we see again a little notice up at the top. Great. And you can see now we have a timestamp. So let's create a new server, my server, standard port, standard everything else. I'm choosing vanilla. And then all these other settings you can take a look at and see how they correspond with what you want from your server. I'll go ahead and create the server. Successfully created. Let's go to server status. We can see it is here. We start it. And then this thing will update, showing that the server is up and running in just a moment. Uh, during the first start, it's always going to be a little bit slower because there's the world generation. There we go. It is now up and running. And you can see here's the memory usage. Out of 256, I allocated it by not filling that previous value. We can see here it is already up and running. Here is the log. And best of all, we can already connect. And that is it. So this is the video about setting up MinOS on, or setting up Minecraft on MinOS Turnkey. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day.